Can you hear that? Yeah. I love the sound of birds. Oh, nice. <laughs> hey! I was, I was listening to the bee. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Coming at you out in the wilderness with oh, Nick. Now, I am going to be setting up a shelter today, and I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks for how to handle really, really, really hot weather camping. All right, there's a few tricks and I've never seen them shown on YouTube and I've never heard anybody talk about them, but they're things that I've learned over the years and I'm gonna share them with you today. Now, Nick, I'm gonna be doing the setting up and the filming and Nick has got an awesome new toy today. Show me your toy real quick. Hell detector. Yep. Cheapest one you can buy from them. <laughs> That's a Garrett 150. So he's gonna be trying that thing out and seeing how he likes it. Uh, so. I don't know how close he's going to be to me. If you hear a bunch of beeping in the background, that's what it's going to be. I don't know if you see the... Yeah. Is that it? Ace 150? There you go. All right. Hey, it says Made in the USA. That's awesome. Cool. Hmm. All right. Well, enough dilly-dallying around. Uh, I'm going to grab my pack and head up the hill, and then Nick's just going to kind of wander around aimlessly with a metal detector and a shovel. <laughs> and then hopefully by the end of, end, end of the video, he's going to say yes or no. So, all right. You ready to go? Let's go. All right, let's do this. To find some treasures. Let's go <laughs> make like, some treasures. It's like Goodwill, let the treasure hunt begin. <laughs> um, the first part of my method is determining wind direction. Now, with the setup I'm going to show you, if there's a lot of wind, like say if you're in a tent with no fly and it's just like a bug tent, you're going to take advantage of the wind. The way I've got this thing devised to set, be set up, you can, even the slightest breeze, you can take advantage of. And that's why you have to, even though, you, you can't just look up at the trees, you know. And some people, some people, they'll, they'll, they'll lick their finger and they'll hold it up to the wind. Well, I don't, I've never been able to do that. And then some people will open their eyes real big and try to determine it that way. But here's a couple of other ways that I'm going to show you on how to do this. And, uh, but... Determining the wind direction, even if it's the slightest breeze, that depends on which direction you're going to set this shelter up. All right. So, what I'm going to do, and and there's always more breeze out in the open, so it's even more important that you find out where the breeze is uh, whenever you're deep in the forest. All right, I got kind of a decent area right here, and uh, I'm right in the middle of a whole bunch of trees, and you're going to need all these little trees here. You can see there's a nice flat area here where we can set up our tent. Um, I'm going to take his backpack off and pull everything out and lay it on the ground. And then I'm going to show you about wind direction. Today I'm using my Hidden Woodsman Tropical Rucksack. So I believe, let's pull this stuff out of these pockets here. People always like seeing all the different stuff that I carry. And... Uh, how it fills up a pack. Okay. I have my typical green ground cloth that I always use. I like to have that for in case there's any kind of moisture on the forest floor. All right, we have a yellow tarp. And we have, that's what we're gonna need here in a minute. That, that. Canteen thermos. Canteen with a cup. I'm going to leave that in there. We don't need that. And on the other side, as always, a bag of paracord. We're going to need that. Now let's dig inside here and see what we have. All right. First aid kit. Now I'm going to leave this laying. I don't talk about this enough. I'm going to leave this laying right here on the ground. Right here, out in the open where I can see it. All right, there's some cordage. May need that. I won't need this. I won't need this. I'm gonna put this back in. I have. Okay, this thing's cool. I'm gonna show you this here in a little while. All right, uh, this is my sleeping mat. May or may not need this. I don't know, I haven't decided. Here's a tarp with some pegs in it. And here is my tent and tent pegs. You're going to get a kick out of this. Let's see. Let's put this stuff back in. 
because I won't need it. Let's move this to the side. All right, so this is everything that I'm going to need right here. And we're going to start out with this and this, talking about wind direction. My favorite methods for determining wind direction are, first you need a compass so that you can, and what you need to do, it used to be when I was on, on my way to the campsite, slowly on my way to choosing the campsite, every five to 10 minutes I would check wind direction, but I discovered it changes due to landscape, due to where the valleys are and the hills and the amount of trees and the location of the trees. All right, so the first thing you want to do, okay, determine where you are. <laughs> Get this stupid lid lock, in. Okay, you want to find north. All right. Determine where north is, find out where you're at. Then you can take like toilet paper. You can take one of the methods is you can take a handful of leaves and you can crumple them up and you can drop them. Now they're not, okay, let's see if you can see this. They're not falling straight down. They are not falling straight down. They're falling at an angle. They're falling directly towards that tree, okay? They're falling directly towards that tree, so I'm gonna point my compass to that tree. Now that's one method, okay? Crumpling up some leaves. Now the other method, you all carry toilet paper, is take your toilet paper and just simply hold it up like this. Now sometimes, oh, look at that, do you see it? Did you just sit look at it? The breeze is blowing The breeze is blowing towards this tree and beside this tree. Now another method that you can do with this, that was blowing pretty good right there, but what you can do is you can split this toilet paper in half. Uh, you can't hardly look at the trees. Some people look at the trees and the leaves. And, but, but sometimes it, when it's up high, it, it, it's kind of a whirl. Look at that. Do you see that? Look, I'm going to pull it. That's straight. I'm going to let go of it. Look at that. It's aiming straight towards that tree. Straight towards it. That's perfect. That is perfect. All right. That's the best method right there. Now, the other method, <clears throat> I learned this from a YouTube video. I can't remember the guy's name. But he's saying... Another method you can do to double check this is that everybody's got a ferro rod, is you can strike a ferro rod. Look. Did you see that smoke? It's going towards that tree. All right, so I just used a couple of different methods here. I just used a couple of different methods and all three of them pointed towards this tree. You can also light a candle, like if you carry tea candles, you can watch which way the flame flickers. That's really not necessary because I feel very confident now of which direction the wind is going. So, north. That's north. Northeast. We're about 40 degrees east of north, okay? So that's gonna be the direction we're gonna set our shelter up in, all right? I hope that wasn't too boring, but that's the methodology because like right now I'm standing here and I can even take my hat off and I don't feel any breeze. And that's because you don't feel the slightest breeze, but my setup here that I'm fixing to show you takes advantage of the slightest breeze. <laughs> But it won't take advantage if you don't know what direction it's going. All right, so let's get to the setup now. How many minutes is that? I don't know. That's four minutes of determining wind. 
I may have to cut some stuff out of this. <laughs> All right, let's get, get it set up. All right, where I'm standing, the wind is blowing in that direction. So what I want to do is I want to set a tarp up with the high side facing that way. Because what I'm doing is I'm wanting to catch that wind into a giant funnel effect. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out. Now the tent is freestanding. I can put it anywhere. The tarp that I set up is dependent upon the trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a couple of trees. And I'm going to go ahead and try to set the tarp up. And once the tarp is set up, then I can put the tent under it. Okay. It's going to make more sense in a minute. Believe me. <laughs> so I, you've seen me set these tarps up a thousand times. I'm just going to. I'm going to set the tarp up off camera, and then I'll cut it on, and I'll explain just a tiny bit more about it, and then we'll move on to setting up the tent. All right. <clears throat> so that's one of the first things that I do to make it easier for me. Uh, I said I wasn't going to show this up, but this is one of the little tricks. Set the tarp on the ground and aim it to where the wind's coming from this direction. So you'll know this is going to be the high side, and that's going to be the low side because you're going to be catching the wind as it comes in. Okay, and you'll stand beside the tarp or in front of the tarp and double check your direction on your compass to make sure that you're going in the right direction of the wind the determination, that you, the, the wind flow you determined. Okay, so now we just got to dig out our paracord and string it up. There's the tarp set up. We got one end high, one end low. And the direction of the wind is blowing that way. That way, whatever it, it whatever, uh, wind gets kind of garnered into that area is going to flow in that direction okay next thing you want to do is right at the edge you want to set up your one-man tent or bug net whatever you carry The next step what you want to do is you want to, you're under the tarp and you want to lay your tent underneath the tarp to make sure that you're at the very back side of it. And once you've laid it out and you see where it's at, see all the stuff on the ground? Some people call it leaf litter, some call it forest debris, some call it duff, D-U-F-F. This stuff's great in the winter time. Uh, you want it under your tent because it insulates you from the ground. This is kind of a loftiness. but in this case, part of one of the tricks of staying cold or cool is what you want to do is figure out where your tent's going to be and then get your stick and clear the area down to the dirt. Get rid of, get rid of this. This is to an advantage in the winter. It's horrible in the summer. And then there's one more trick to using the advantage of being directly on the dirt. All right? So we're going to get rid of this. So what we have here now, I don't know if you can see it or not because of this glare, but I've removed all of the leaves. And when you remove the leaves, you're removing the sticks, the pine cones, and all the rocks. And you can also un uncover ant hills or wasp nest underground if, if in the process. Now, <clears throat> you don't want anything thick under your tent. Uh, some people could just put their tent directly on, but I'm not a fan of that. I'll take some very, very thin clear plastic and I'll lay it down. That's enough for the main body of the tent. That's a bag. I could cut it in half, but I think that's going to be good enough just to take care of the head in. Now all I got to do is stake it down and put the stake it down and put the poles in. That's an old walrus tent from back in the 90s, and uh, I just bought some 
new tent stakes for it because the old ones are lost. And it came with uh, aluminum aluminum poles, but they broke or got lost years ago. So I made up a new set of poles with rubber hoses. <laughs> You'll see how it's set up here in a minute. Alright, got the stakes in. Let's put the poles in. This isn't necessarily a cold weather tip, but this is just a tip that you may uh, find helpful if you ever lose your poles or crash your poles or whatever. You can, like I said, this had curved poles. I'm just using rubber hose on a bunch of old tent stakes. I mean uh, tent poles. So what you do, so you put them together, and even though they're straight, they'll curve. Slide that through. And pop it in a little grommet, just like that. Put the other one together. See, curves. Let's slide that through here. Because it's a perfectly good tent other than the poles not being there. You pop that in in that grommet. And then you just lift it up and squeeze it together. See, there you go. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> Improvising at its best. There you go. See? It ain't gonna win a beauty contest, but it'll hold the tent up. So as you can see here, you've got your tent. And instead of using a rain fly over it, you're using a giant tarp over it at an angle. And the wind is coming in this direction. Whatever wind is coming in, it's grabbing. You can even see how it's kind of lifting the tarp up. Now, there's another part to that setup I'm gonna show you in a minute. But right now, you have a freestanding tent sitting there, touching Mother Earth. Now, in the winter time, you want, whether it's a foam pad or an inflatable sleeping pad, that's what you want like in the winter, and preferably like a thermarest or a Climate Static V insulated, because those things are insulated, that even though they're self-inflating, the air in them won't get cold, and if you have enough layers under you, it won't draw the cold from the earth and freeze you. All right? Well, in the summertime, it's different. Now, remember, i got to reiterate before people start complaining and going, going, you know they make sleeping pads. <laughs> well, yes, I just explained. Sleeping pads are for wintertime. But now in the summer, what you want to do is the cool coming up from the ground and freezing you is to advantage. So what you want to do is you want to take a pull float. <laughs> now a pull float, this is a very, very, very heavy duty Intex pull float. You don't want a piece of junk, okay? Uh, if these are very, very, very hard to find. This is by Intex. Uh, these are hard to find. You really, if you're gonna be hiking way off in, into the distance and you don't want a cheap pull float to bust on you while you're laying on it. But, now the idea behind this is it is a pull float, it is not insulated. And when you blow this up, the air in it is gonna get very, very cold because it's not insulated. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw the cool from the ground, all right? So what you wanna do is get one of these things here. There's some kind of a weird diaphragm inside here that when you push and when you pull, it blows out. And that's how you pump this up. So 
So I'm going to pump this up, lay it in a tent, and then we'll move on to the other part of this. And then we're going to kind of talk about, we're going to wrap things up after I've done the last part. I can't reiterate this enough. Do not use anything like this in cool weather. Don't use it in the fall. Don't use it in the, in the winter. Maybe don't use it in the spring. But summertime when it's hot, this is great. Because you can see the thickness of this. And see, this thing, anytime you've got something like this, the air in this is going to draw the temperature out of the ground and get very, very cold. It's great. Now, one like this, uh, this is a very old one. I don't know where to buy it. So if you asked, I don't know, but it is an Intex. But it's like a smooth vinyl on one side, and then it's got like a kind of a rough cordura type feel to this side. You want the smooth side down because the smooth side seems like it'll transfer the cool from the ground a little bit better. So what we're going to do now, let's open this up. So we're going to throw this in there. Right inside like that. There we go. So now we're good to go. You may scoot it. What I'll do is I'll scoot it to the side. I'll scoot it to the side when I crawl in and zip back up. I'll be good to go. I'm going to zip it back up for now to keep the bugs out. All right. Now let's go with the last part. Let's have a look at what we got so far. Most people... When you add a freestanding tent, they're going to put a rain fly directly over the top. But you lose the advantage of having all your bug net material then because you're not getting no uh, air to it. Well, we're taking advantage by funneling it in the direction it goes in. Now, the other trick is see right there on the ground beside the tent, all that leaf litter, duff, forest debris. That is not only insulation under a tent, but it's also resistance. It's resistance to wind. So just like that's funneling it in, you want to funnel it in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this other tarp, and you want a bright, obnoxious looking color so that you don't trip over it. And what we're going to do next is we're going to stab two sticks in the ground right next to the tent. And we're going to put the tarp right there, right above the bug net, and then we're going to come out at an angle and stake it down to the ground. All right. That way, it's going to be a smooth transition from the ground to, and we're going to funnel more air into the uh, tent instead of having it just kind of swirl around everywhere and the forest debris slowing it down. We're like making a giant wind tunnel. So let's set that up next. All right, you want to trim me off some vines here. Make you a couple of stakes. Now, one way of making them without having to sharpen them, see if I can do this, is to cut it at an angle. Just like that. Now, see how that's sharp? Let's get the other one. There's the other one. See, now I don't have to sharpen it. Of course, if I wanted to, I could take a little hair, a little hair, and I'm good to go. Next thing you want to do is you want to take your stakes and say, this tarp's 8 feet by 10 feet. I want to come 10 feet, like right at the edges, right in line with this. If you don't have a hammer, you can use a Alabama hammer. <laughs> That's a joke from my older listeners. Viewers. Right and then you stretch the tarp out. On this tarp, a lot of people will use paracord. But if you saw about two videos ago, I like to use these uh, little bitty mini 8 inch elastic bungee cordage with easy lock cord locks. And I keep, I've started keeping about four of them on my tarps. So you just open it up. 
pull your tarp out. And that way you've got these attached to the bag so if you use them, you know where they're at. And if you don't, you won't lose them instead of just throwing them in the bag. For this part, we're going to use a real nauseating yellow color. <laughs> that way you'll, you'll be able to see it and you won't trip over it. Now the way this is, you may have to move the stakes around a little bit. This one here, I've got it bungee corded on. I'm going to pull it out. And we'll pull it over here. We'll see if we can beat this in. That's about right. All right, now if you look from this angle, you can kind of see the tarp is ramping up. And the height of it is right where that solid nylon is. It's stopping right, right at the bug net. So you're wanting to ramp the air up towards it. Now this, this can actually use a stake and kind of pull this up at an angle. That'll pull at an angle and then I'll move that again. Let's see. I got to go cut another stake. Now this isn't the ideal location because for the tarp because that tree is going around that tree. A tree should be gone, but I'm not going to do anything about that. But as you can see, uh, like I said before, there's the net. And now I've got this right at the height of where the net starts. And then it's at an angle down. Now between this roof, grabbing what little bit of breeze there is and funneling it in. And then this, not only stopping the resistance, but it funnels it up to the bug net. Alright. Let's get a different view, a couple of different views of it. Here you go, another view of it. Top, top tarp, <laughs> top tarp, top tarp is coming down, and not only is it keeping rain off, but it's funneling the wind in, and then that is slowing down the resistance of the, the wind and funneling it straight into the bug net. That's how you want it set up. And see, so here's yet another view of it. You can really see there. The way I've got right where that the bug netting starts, I've got that tarp up on the sticks ramping it up just like that. And you want a nice nauseating color so that you'll know not to step on it. <laughs> so, but there's another view. Just just think about all this is funneling in. What little bit of breeze? It turns a little bit of breeze into a lot of breeze. Now it takes some, some trouble setting this up. But as far as it working efficiently, you have to try this to believe it. Uh, sleep in your bug tent with nothing and then sleep in it with this and you'll be very surprised. We're in the wind direction here. The wind is flowing straight in that way. Just all grabbing it and funneling it in. And we have the backside view. Got our tent, top tarp, bottom tarp, wind coming right in, cooling you off. <laughs> Ain't nothing better. All right, so Nick has decided to rejoin us, and Nick has been using the Garrett 150 Ace. Brand new, he just bought it. What was it $163? No, it's like marked down to $140. Okay, so. What do you think about it? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Total piece of junk. You heard it here. <laughs> Garrett 150. Piece of junk. What did you say? What they only want one inch deep in the dirt? No, I was talking about. Well, the shovel I had was crap. But I mean, the metal detector itself. I could be running it around the ground, and it would just be saying different things were right there. And then I could sit there running over it again. And then it would all of a sudden just stop saying there was anything there. Uh, I kept running over plants and it kept saying there's something gold there. <laughs> and it would do it once and then it wouldn't do it again. So whoever's interested in metal detecting, I know this ain't a metal detecting channel, but Nick wanted to try it out while I was setting things up. And it is a piece of junk. Don't buy one. 
trash. All right. Well, that's just that one. Well, it's just the heat. I mean, to be fair, I did buy the cheapest one they had. Yeah. Yeah, but it should work, you know? All right, so let's wrap things up here. And I want to crawl in here, Nick. I want to lay on this thing. So let's zip this open. Have a look inside. Now, so you've been over here napping while I was uh, searching for treasure. No, I wasn't, man. I think it'll have it all. Right there. See if we can crawl in. Oh, I got room to crawl in here. Oh. I got room to turn around. Oh. Yeah, I got room. Now this is actually, this is actually a lot more comfortable than a standard mattress. But like I say, in the winter time, you'll freeze. Alright. Pull this back over. Looks good to me. What do you think, Nick? Uh, I think our users are about to watch you take a nap. Yes, I am. I'm exhausted. Hey, I actually feel a little bit of a breeze in here. That's because it's windy. Yeah. Hey, bring that camera in a little bit closer. Let's see. I want to see how this feels on the side. If you're a side sleeper. Uh, it's actually not bad side sleeping. This could be a little higher. Man. This is so nice. And I actually feel the breeze. Looks cozy. Yeah, it's very cozy. Oh, and it doesn't hurt to make sure just out of curiosity, is you can take that toilet paper trick and hang that toilet paper out there on the end and see how much it blows. <clears throat> I'm gonna jump out here real quick and we're gonna try that. All right. Let's see how easy it is to get out. I probably should have crawled in to begin with. You know what? Yeah. All right, so here's the test to see how this thing works here. Y'all remember how the wind was blowing before? There you go. It seemed like before it was just barely blowing and now it's like blowing really hard into there. Looks good to me. At one time it blew that way. Now it's blowing that way. But for the most part it's blowing in that direction. <laughs> That's fantastic. That makes me very, very happy. Alright. These setups will never be the same. They're always different. But what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to try to make the most of the area you're in and the trees and the location of the trees and, you know, three things. Determine wind direction, use wind direction to your advantage, and use the coldness of the ground seeping up as your advantage. All right? So, hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, get out, try this kind of stuff. It does make a big difference. A big, big difference. <laughs> you wouldn't think it would, but it does. So, we shall. See you in the next one. See you later.